Welcome to the Joy of Development. In this episode, we'll be continuing our procedurally generated levels project, developing a technique to manage the issues we had with intersecting rooms in the previous episode. This is the first of a few different techniques that we'll work out. I call this one the under construction method. We're going to tackle it over three episodes, and for this one, we're going to create hallways to link rooms together. We've added a new actor to our project called Wall Collision. We've also added a few things to our room actor. A new custom event called Remove Wall. And a new function called Under Construction Room, which replaces our basic room function from before. Most things in here are going to be pretty similar to what we had them as before. However, there's a few important changes that you need to be aware of. We've added a new spacer function, which we'll disable for the time being. A new integer variable called entry shift, which we're going to want to subtract from our room tiles y for loop. A boolean variable called hall, which will control whether or not we spawn the top and bottom walls of the room. We'll also be using entry shift as our entryway check integer. We'll also be subtracting an entry shift number of tiles from the y-axis of each of our locations. All of these entry shift offsets exist for a step that we're going to cover in the next video, but putting them in at this step won't cause any issues, so feel free to get them out of the way. With all that out of the way, let's get into our wall or door reconstruct function. We've added a bit of new code to the beginning, but for now we're just going to bypass it and go into what we've already assembled. The major changes here is I've added a seed variable to our door, and using our random room stream, given it a random seed. We've also added a spawn actor wall collision node. If we preview the game without enabling this, you'll see that all of the walls look the same as they did in the last episode. However, if we enable it, set its index to the same index as our instance we just added, set its room to self, and add it to an array of wall collisions. We can then preview the game, and you'll see the walls are now all labeled with their index. So now let's check out what the wall collision actor actually is. Its components are a box collision with a text render component on top of it. They're positioned that if we place them on top of a 400 by 400 wall mesh, that it would encompass it perfectly. That's a location of 200 on the X, 200 on the Z, and a box extent of 200, 10, 200. In the event graph, we have an event begin play, which immediately fires an update event. We also plug in the index into the update. Updating will set the index to whatever numbers provided. Then it'll update the text render to read that integer. And finally, we have the remove index event. This fires a remove wall event on the targeted room and provides the index of the wall collision. After doing so, the wall collision destroys itself. So let's go back to our room's remove wall event and figure out exactly how it works. First off, something very important to note. For the under construction method, we've been using a different type of wall. It's a hierarchical instant static mesh, which I've labeled wall2. Hierarchical instant static meshes store their index arrays differently than regular instant static meshes do. Because of this, it's easier to keep track of them and we can delete them more easily. We'll remove the instance of wall2 at the index provided. Next, we'll need our wall collisions array and we're gonna get a copy of the last index. We'll take that copy and we'll set it as the array element at the index provided. And we're also going to update the wall collision with the index. Finally, we're going to remove the last index from wall collisions. Alright, so with that all covered, I'm sure there might be a few of you who are a little confused. So let's go over why we do this. In this example, you can see that the indexes 0 and 1 stay in their place the entire time. You can also see that indexes 3 through 8 also stay in their place the entire time. The only indices that need to be moved are 2 and 9. So we start with our initial array, and in this example, we want to delete the second index. After deleting the index, we take the very last index, in this case index 9, copy it, and move it into the second index place. We then update it to read the appropriate index. And finally, Delete the duplicate at the end. Following this strategy on our wall collisions array allows it to stay in sync with the indexing of the hierarchical instant static mesh. Now I've added a little test functionality to the player's activate event. This checks if the object detected was a wall collision. If so, it casts to the wall and executes the remove index event. 
With this on, let's go preview the game and get a real-time example of how this works. 26 is the last index of our room. So if I go up to wall number 7 and delete it, the wall instance we selected, as well as its collision volume, will both be destroyed. However, index number 7 will just get moved to the current position of wall 26, and there will no longer be any walls labeled 26. Now if we remove wall number 1, wall number 25 will become wall number 1, as 25 was the last index in the array. Trying to delete wall 7 again works just fine, and it just goes to wall 24. And deleting the last wall in the array, in this case number 22, the index just simply gets removed. Now let's make use of this functionality to bridge gaps between different rooms. So we'll open up our door actor for this. The first thing you'll see here is on event begin play, we're creating a new random stream. After that is our event activate from the previous episodes, with a few minor modifications. Rather than putting room generation behind a do once node, we've moved it behind a branch that checks if the boolean roomify is active. If so, we set it to false and move on. Now we'll use our random stream to generate a limit for our room size. And we'll set up two other variables with the same integer, one for left limit and one for right limit. After this, instead of generating a new room, we're going to go to a different event I made called add addition. This event starts with a line trace that will check in front of the door by the room limit distance. The line trace is also centered in the wall. If an actor is detected, we're going to get its class as a display name, and have that go into a switch node. Your labels will be dependent on what you've named your classes. So in my case, I've got door underscore C and wall collision underscore C. If our result is a door, we'll cast to the door and we'll set its roomify variable to false. If the result is a wall collision, we'll cast to the wall collision and do a remove index function. After either of those fires, we'll then create a new room. For the new room, we're going to set hall to true. Room tiles y to 1. Room tiles x will be set to the trace distance, divided by tile size, rounded. Shift will be set to 0, and max doors you can set to whatever you like. Our new room function is basically the same as last time, we've just added the new nodes for all of our new variables. And if our line trace doesn't hit anything, then currently it just goes on to creating a new room. But we will be diving into this in the next episode. With all that set up, we can preview the game and see what everything does. Opening a door gives us a new room as expected, and we can see that there's a line trace coming out from the doorway all the way to the other side of the room. Opening another door will give us another room and another line trace, and still no collisions. However, in this room, one of the doors faces a wall that already exists. If we open this door, the line trace will come back with a hit, resulting in a hallway being generated. It also sets the door's roomify variable to false, so now we can open it freely without worrying about it creating new intersecting rooms. Now we'll take a different route until we get a door facing a wall instead of another door. Now that we found one, we can open the door. It'll delete the wall and leave us with a nice hallway bridging the gap. So this stops rooms from intersecting on the x-axis. In the next video, we'll be focusing on the y-axis and making sure that the room fits in the available space without overlapping any other rooms. Thank you for watching The Joy of Development. If you enjoyed the channel, please be sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon, and smash that like button.